What's going on everybody? Robert Rosenfeld from Techno Buffalo here and I'm here in sunny Mountain View, California here at Google I.O. 2018. You might not be able to tell from this little reclusive shelter here, but the I.O. keynote just wrapped up and we found some shelter, a little safe haven so we could have a quiet place to kind of chat about Android P. And of course, at the keynote, we heard the buzzwords. We heard about AI and machine learning and deep learning. But really the whole message here that Google was trying to talk about was being able to use those really powerful tools to allow us to have a better mobile experience. So on Android P, we're able to do things that we often do on our phones more quickly and basically just better disconnect and keep those times when we want the phone out of our life completely out and when we want it, better engage and do things faster. So let's talk about the five features that we are most excited about in Android P. So feature number one is this new digital well-being dashboard. And Google spent a lot of time talking about this and how they can use on the phone machine learning to basically understand what you're doing on the phone, what apps you're spending your time in, what services you're using, to basically give you a breakdown in this dashboard of where your time is being spent. You can see what app you're spending a lot of time in. Maybe you're using Facebook and Instagram a lot. You can see how many notifications you're getting, how often you're unlocking your phone and maybe just glancing at it. The dashboard really gives you a better understanding of how you're using your time on your phone to make better decisions. Maybe you notice that you have a little bit of a newsfeed problem. You can set an app timer on there to kind of nudge you in the right direction after let's say an hour or two hours in that app to hey maybe it's time to get off your phone go do something else and eventually that app will be grayed out after you've hit that time limit kind of reminding you that hey you used your time allotted for this app for the day why not do something else kind of pushing you out and getting you to do more things this whole dashboard is really about that idea of understand where your time is going on your phone making better decisions and kind of getting a grasp on your digital behavior specifically on your Android P phone all right, feature number two we are very excited about in Android P, adaptive brightness and adaptive battery. Let's start with brightness first. Now, how many times during the day are you constantly adjusting that toggle for the brightness of your screen? Auto brightness just never seems to get it right for me, and it's probably the case for you as well, so you're constantly manually having to adjust that. With this new adaptive brightness feature, basically the AI in the phone learns what you have the brightness set at in a certain place, a certain time, so it can automatically make those adjustments for you, kind of a, a smarter auto brightness. Also, number two with adaptive battery, the AI in the phone is again using its powerful machine learning technology to understand what apps you're using, what services you're using, and better shift the battery and the phone's resources over to what you're using. So basically they said they want to put the battery's juice into the apps and services you're using and not wasting them on just kind of a broad overall sense of every little task running on the phone. All right, feature number three we are excited about, and that is the whole idea of gestures built in natively supported on Android P. We kind of heard that Android P might be taking some features from the iPhone 10, and this is one case where we're gonna see those features translate over, and the gestures on Android P work very similar to that on the iPhone 10. You can swipe up from the bottom to be able to get kind of a multi-split, multi-task window where you can jump between different apps. The cool thing about how this works on Android P though is that you're able to interact with the different apps while they're in this multitask state. So if you wanna copy and paste from one app to another, maybe from a website to an email, you can do that simply easily and without having to go back and forth between different apps. If you wanna swipe up, again, you can get a full list of all the apps on your phone to go home. It's simple, you just press down on that little pill icon, that gesture area on the bottom to go home. And it also has the ability to swipe left and right to get kind of a quicker, more efficient app switcher, kind of like on the iPhone 10. So if you wanna switch between apps quickly from the left and the right, you can do that as well. Feature number four, wind down. Now, how many times do you guys spend laying in your bed, browsing through Reddit, or maybe watching a Techno Buffalo video on YouTube, and more time passes than you might realize? It happens to me all the time. Google is trying to fix that on Android P with a new feature called wind down. Essentially, what it's gonna do is you're able to kind of put in what time you wanna go to bed, and the phone will kind of prompt you and remind you, hey, it's time to go to bed, it's time to you know put the phone down and go to sleep, eventually turning the entire phone screen grayscale. So everything is basically a shade of gray, almost black and white in a sense, that's really going to try to get you to put that phone down, make you not want to use it, and get a good night's rest. All right, and rounding out this list, feature number five on Android P we are very excited about is this new feature called Shush. It's basically a more seamless way of turning on Do Not Disturb. Of course, you know, Do Not Disturb is that mode where you can silence notifications, not get any phone calls, basically allows you to put your phone down, be disconnected, and not get bothered unless an emergency is occurring from a family member or friend. This works basically the same way, but let's say you're at a dinner party or you're out with your friends and your phone's on the table and it's going off, 
instead of having to pick up the phone, you know, fiddle around with settings and turn on do not disturb, you can literally just put the phone screen face down on the table and it'll activate the shush mode, which basically is do not disturb. Your phone won't vibrate, nothing's gonna go off, nothing's gonna ping. And unless you get a call from someone in your emergency contact list or specific contacts that you set, the phone is not going to make a sound. Really, again, following this initiative of being more present and being less connected to your smart device. All right, guys, so that's kind of an overview of the top five features of Android P. I'm really curious, after watching the keynote, obviously we heard a lot about this digital well-being and Google really pushing this digital initiative to get us off of our smartphones, off of our computers and tablets, and really more connected and present in the real world, really kind of touching on this issue that maybe we're a little bit more addicted to our smartphones than we might have thought of. What do you guys think? Leave a comment down below. Anything else you saw that was cool here at IO 2018, leave a comment down below. Let us know, and uh, we'll have, of course, full coverage on everything happening here as well as more Android P goodness, especially also when we get the actual name for what Android P stands for. We'll have that all and more at technobuffalo.com. Thanks so much for watching this video, guys. I am Robert Rosenthal from Technobuffalo. We'll see you in the next one.